In this video, we'll briefly review the purpose and syntax of if statements in MATLAB. We'll also do a few simple examples to illustrate the concepts. Holistically, any computer program can be interpreted as a series of instructions. All programs can be built from a combination of repetition and decision structures. Decision structures tell the computer to choose between some options based on whether a condition is met. There are many ways to create decision structures in MATLAB. The most common is the if, else if, else statement. Logical operators are a fancy way of simplifying if, else if, else statements. The switch statement isn't used very often in this class, but can be the best option of the three depending on the context. For now, let's only focus on the if, else if, else statements. Here's the anatomy of an if statement. We start with the blue if keyword. Then we have some expression, which yields a boolean, aka a true or false output. This expression can be a logical operator, a relational operator, or both. See my videos on relational and logical operators if you need a refresher on those and booleans. If the result of expression 1 is true, the block of code comprising statements 1 is executed. If statements can also have multiple branches. We can add another condition if the first expression isn't satisfied. To do so, we use the else if keyword and another expression in case the first expression fails. If expression 2 is true, then statements 2 is executed. If statements usually, but not always, conclude with an else statement. This is like the last resort scenario. Statement 3 will be executed if none of the previous conditions are met. Finally, we close the entire block with the blue corresponding end keyword. You can have as many or as few else if cases as you want. I've seen codes with over 20 else if statements. You can also have no else if statements. If I were coding something binary, like a yes or no decision, I probably wouldn't need an else if because I could just use the if and the else. Unlike else ifs, you can only have zero or one else's. Not using an else seems weird, but it can actually happen in practice. For example, let's say you're looping through a vector and you want to change one particular element within the vector to the number 5. The only action you need to take is to change that one particular element. Nothing happens to the other numbers. Therefore, you wouldn't necessarily need an else because you don't need to do anything otherwise. Now let's turn to MATLAB for a couple of examples. Here we are in MATLAB. You can download a skeleton script file and a completed script file from the links in the video description. Let's start with a very simple if-else block. Here, we've defined an x value and some threshold value, which I'll just call thresh for brevity. The if statement checks if our supplied x value is less than or equal to the threshold value. If so, we have x and store the result in a variable called y. Because this condition is true, this y equals x over 2 line is executed, and we don't move to the y equals 10 times x line. Let's change x from 2 to 6. Now, this expression is false. As indicated by the logical zero. Therefore, this y equals x over 2 line isn't executed and we default to the y equals 10 times x line within the else branch. Now let's try an example with an else if statement. The first condition starts by checking if x is less than thresh. If so, we set y equals to 1. If not, then we proceed to the else if statement and check if x is greater than thresh. If so, we set y equals to 10. 
But if that's not the case, then we default to the else, and then we set y equals to 100. In other words, if x is exactly equal to thresh, the else block will be run. Currently, x equals 6, so this first if condition is false. So then we move to the else if statement and check that condition. This condition yields a logical 1, which means true, so we execute the lines of code within the else if block. In this case, the only line of code we have is the y equals 10 line, so we see that y equals 10 in the command window. Now if we change x to 5, which is exactly the threshold value, both of the if and else if conditions will be false, so we default to the else condition, which is why y equals 100. It can be hard to keep track of which lines are executed, especially if your code is complex. You can add some simple messages inside the body of each condition to help debug your code. Now we can clearly see which case the if, the else if, or the else was executed. This can be particularly helpful if you have many ifs and else ifs, or if you just don't know which condition is true. Finally, let's try making nested if statements. This means putting an if inside an if. We have an if, an else if, and an else, all nested within this if statement. Nested if statements are useful if you need to check a set of subsequent conditions. If we run the code, we see that the non-nested else was executed. This is because x currently equals 5, so the first if's condition is false. Because the first if condition is false, the entire nested if statement is bypassed and we just proceed to the else. Let's change x to 12 and see what happens. Now we see that the nested else if was executed. The first condition is now true. So now we move into the nested if statements. The first nested ifs condition is false because x is 12, which is not greater than 3 times thresh, which is 15. So now we move on to the else if statement. This condition is true because 12 is greater than 2 times thresh, or 10. So now we print the nested else if executed string to the command window. Play around with various x values to see which string gets printed. That's it for this video. I hope you learned how to implement if statements in MATLAB.